So welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at the first ever coin game, And the Abyss. One. It's from GMT Games, designed by Volko Runke. And Andy and Abyss is about kind of a civil war counterinsurgency conflict in Colombia. Uh, it's, this is a multiplayer war game. So it can play anywhere from one player with a bunch of solo bots mm -hmm. to four players, each player controlling one of the four separate factions in this. Now, if you've ever played any of the coin games, this is the first ever one. So this is kind of the, the father of that series. Which uh, is funny because we've played every other one yeah. except this one. And it's just... It was out of print for a while. Yeah. We, they we just, couldn't get a copy. Just did another printing. So it, we got a copy. And so, so this is off. This is us playing the very first one, playing it last in the order. So it was a very interesting experience actually playing this game through the lens of all the mm -hmm. other ones that we've played. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is kind of the original. And seeing yes. what was in this game versus what was in some of the other games, what was kept, what was taken out, what was mm -hmm. changed, what was modified. Uh, but seeing this in kind of its original form is very, very fascinating. Um, and I'll be honest, for me, this was a game that... I don't know if I had trepidation going into it, but it was one where the theme is not something mm. that I connect with. I don't know anything about it. And so it was kind of like, what, whatever. You know, I hear you say that, and we, we were talking about that earlier, but think of all the great movies. Like Clear and Present Danger. Have you seen Clear and Present Danger with Harrison Ford? A long time ago. I mean, that involves this. It's It's... I mean, it's not completely this. But, like, I, this but, is not something that I'm like, ooh, no, I have a connection to it and I know no, it. No, I, I, yeah, we have no connection to this. We have no historical, even, connection to this. But it, but to me, it's something that has been very interesting over the last 25 years. Right. Because it's, it's really affected our, the U.S.'s global policy on how to deal with Different things, you know, the Contras and Nicaragua. And, and I'm from a and, small rock in the North Atlantic, and we don't. Right. And this is. Yeah, this I, I guess. Nothing affects nothing apart from maybe the price of Class A drugs, which we don't. Know. Well, and, and I think maybe that's the difference that yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm an American by birth. Yeah. You're by citizenship. Congratulations. It's awesome. By adoption. By adoption. <laughs> and I've always thought about Central America and, and the effect it has. And yeah. 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 This so anyway, is, I just for me didn't have a connection. Didn't have a connection. Whatsoever, didn't have any expectations for it. And usually in right. a war game, uh, if if I know something about the theme, I'm like, ooh, extra excited for yeah. this. one I'm like, all right, okay. Yeah. But the game itself was excellent. I had yeah. a really good time playing this, and I, that that not necessarily in that frame of mind, me, but it made me. I was relieved and very happy that I enjoyed right. a game that I didn't know anything about and didn't necessarily wasn't super duper pumped. For the theme right. of it, right? Well, and, and I would have for a counter-argument to that. Not a counter-argument, but a different opinion. I was really excited to play this for a couple of reasons. One, the game, the coin games that we really enjoyed, and I'm talking about Cuba Libre, Fire in the Lake. I really like ADP, A Distant Plane. I know you have some different feelings about it. It's fine. But I haven't always enjoyed it, particularly in those couple playing the playing the bad guys. <laughs> You know the in this game it was the uh, the cartels right in Cuba Libre it's the gangsters um, yeah the gangsters it, it's just interesting thing, those and the warlords and ADP I was really interested to see how the cartels and the FARC I, I really was interested to see how they would interact because of the experience I've had with those other games that we've played. I really like it, A Distant Plane. I really enjoy Cuba Libre. We've had a great time with that, that one. That one's a fun one. Because it's just so quick. It's so quick, and I feel like it's so small that... It, it, we'll talk a little bit about that here, but I looked at it a little differently. I think I was a little more excited for this one. Yeah, but it's it was... I don't have to have any reservations about this. This is... No. I mean, this is the, the Godfather of the Coin series. Yeah. And it is an excellent game, and, it, you know... Well, and we talked. I don't I, say a good addition to the series. It was the first, well, the first one. one. <laughs> I'm like, it's well, it's a good addition for us. It was we, yeah, yeah. But I, I think we talked about this. This is a very, I think, clean, understandable game. Yes. Minus the error that was on the. 
yeah, player yeah, yeah. aid. There's you that gotta be almost tripped us up this. big time. So this is I want to is it the second edition? Yes. Yeah. This is the yeah. second edition, and it was put on pause. There's. It was delayed out. going out because they want. Well, they had a couple of cards. cards yeah. Pieces. But the, and, and please don't think we're hacking on GMT. We're no. not. But you, this this is something that really almost caught. We think we're veteran players of this system and series. Yes. And it almost tripped us up. Yes. So, so it's going to get people. So the rule book says refer to the setup card to set the game up, and it has here how you divvy out the factions. The based four on, factions based on player Play, yep. count. If you play four players, everyone gets one faction. Yeah. <clears throat> if you play one player, you just play one faction, and then you got bots for the rest of them. If you play with two players, you're supposed to divide the factions up. You have the government, which are blue, and that player also controls the little yellow AUC faction. A lesser faction. Yeah, they're like a smaller... With simpler ...hardline goals. right-wing group. Yeah. And then the, the second player controls the FARC, which are a bunch of Marxist guerrillas. Yep. And then they also control the cartels. The setup played does not say that. Very confusing. It yeah. is a typo, and it lists the same setup for the three-player version, which is correct. So you just have to make sure. Well, I had to look it up on the internet to make sure right. what we were supposed to do playing a two-player game, how yeah. to divvy up the factions, because this setup is yeah. wrong. So be careful, because if you if you play it. So or if you misread that, you're gonna, you'll mess up your whole game. You'll get destroyed on one side. <laughs> playing with two different factions you shouldn't be playing with. Don't do that. So check check, check BGG, because you'll you'll see they'll they'll clearly say, but that almost got us. I mean, it almost tripped us up, and we would have wasted three hours. Yeah. And, well, I had to, had to read through that a couple times and be like, what is this it just trying wasn't to tell clear. me? I thought it was just bad English. And then I was like, oh no, no it's, a it's exactly the same line. It's, it's, it's got the same setup as the three player. They yeah. just misprinted it twice yeah. as the two player. And I'm like, oh. Because it's a very different game. As three players, you have three guys, right? One plays the major protagonist, the government. One plays the main insurgent, the FARC. And then the third guy really is around to almost like a rat to take advantage yeah, fill the power vacuum uh, yeah make make if know. the fart crushes the government they're going to move in and they're going to do this and they're going to take this money and bribe and yeah and so you it, it just doesn't work the other so, way yeah. with two players that's just one thing great game yeah it was, that's the only mistake that i found in the rules or yeah and everything like else that. was well done just be very cautious yeah and, it, it was even funny we looked at a couple of the cards and the way it said that it's like oh yeah okay because it had both, usually it has the unshaded and the shaded. And there were there were quite a few cards. After we were talking about it, we were like, oh, okay, so this made it clear. Yeah, that that was a typo. That that was a typo, that it should have been. Because those cards always have one event for the, the one side and one event for another. Yeah. So, anyway. So, yeah, that's but that's that was really it. Outside of that, and this sounds kind of redundant to say... But this is a, a very pure coin game. Because it is. It's the a first, first ever yeah. pure coin game. Right? It's really funny. <laughs> really funny now reviewing this yeah. five years later, and six years later. Having played all the other ones. And and referred to it as, it's very pure to the system. Because obviously, it is the system. Obviously it is. Yeah, it's it the system. It strips away everything else yeah. that was added on. And, and so you get it in this most... Pure form. Yeah, basic... Not basic, but like, and, it, and it's just very streamlined form, the bulky de vocal design. Yep. And, and I really like that. Um, what I did enjoy with this, having played Cuba Libre, mm -hmm. is that Cuba Libre is very much, I felt, and the Abyss Redux. Oh, the, yeah, there's the no doubt. factions felt very similar. Yes. Um, yep. And the, the... The 28th of July faction and the... And the, I can't remember the, the, the other operations names. and the, the special gangsters were, yeah. were similar, similar enough, and yeah. how what you were trying to do was similar. Mm -hmm. But Cuba Libre is a very small map, and it cuts out some of the extra layers of detail that you have in this. Well, and so, even the long game in Cuba Libre is what four card, four propaganda card, or four. Uh, yeah, like the long game is cards? forty-eight cards yeah. or something like that. So this this. It was if you played Cuba Libre, this will be very, very familiar to you. Is what I'm trying to say. These two games share a lot in how they play, how they yeah. look, what you're trying yeah. to do with the the cartel. Of, I felt function quite similarly in style to 
the uh, the gangsters Bri- bribing, kidnapping, terror, using those little shit yeah. markers to like bribe people, yeah. do bits and pieces. So that that was something that was nice to see <laughs> again. We're kind of like retroactively playing this one. Yeah, it's a yeah. fascinating way to look at this, but I, yeah. I had a really good time. And again, I surprised myself how much I really enjoyed this. Yes, I not having a connection to this theme. I, I'll come back to that. I agree. I really enjoyed it as well. And it really, I, and we said this, and we just said it again. It feels a lot like Cuba Libre. Yeah, the, the, those are the two and, and, most similar ones yeah. out of all of them, I think. And we should be saying Cuba Libre feels a lot like Andy and Abyss because that's where it came from. Yes, it's I, like I, the child. I suppose of, you would say Cuba Libre is Andy and Abyss Redux. There you I go. would. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna go on and say. Yeah, that. I don't yeah. know. That's a crazy Trade, thing trademark. To say. Trademark. Yeah. But yeah, this is. Yeah. Uh, you just have an action deck. You don't have you know some of the, some of the newer games have things like your what are they called? Are they those re- the in Liberty or Death? It's like the Major Stroke cards or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the, the, they don't and yeah, you don't, they don't have that in this. Like that, that's an innovation pieces. later. Um, yeah, there's the dice rolling is simply are my guys strong enough to attack? You don't right. have a dice roll for how many guys you kill or anything like that. Well, you roll a die, and you're trying to roll under the amount of gorillas that you have attacking. Yeah, so if you've got six guys, you basically you're, don't need to roll. You, yeah. Um, but so you, you want to roll a one, because then you... I think you defeat the enemy, and you get to put yeah, a... you put a little Usually you put a guy out. So, yeah, it, actually, I think the game mechanics are very clean. I think the game mechanics are very clear. I liked the, the victory conditions for the different four factions. Yeah. Definitely the yellow, uh, which was the AUC, AUC and the um, cartels, had much clearer, I, I think much easier or simpler. Yeah. They, they didn't involve so much of the opposition versus control and, you know, than the other two. The main factions had a lot of that. So. Yes, and that's, they're the minor factions, right? Yeah. Usually they're a little more straightforward, so that if you do play it multiplayer... You're not like racking your brains out for two factions. Right. You've got your main guys that you're trying to do along with, and then your kind of subordinate faction. You're like, okay, just trying to put out some bases. Boop, yeah. Boop, you know. yeah. It's not quite as brain burning if you want to play this two player. I also really liked some of the, the, the uh, cartel's actions. The bribe was very cool because not only did you take away their cubes, but you reduced their aid, <laughs> yeah. which aid is a, an additional resource. It's not a huge one, but it, it is something you get, you, you know, you keep fighting to keep it down because they'll get five or six less resources. Um, I loved that. Terror is always fun, and I know that is horrible. Yeah, that was a terrible sentence. To say. <laughs> but as far as a, a game mechanic, it is very interesting how that affects support and opposition, as well as using those civic abilities to buy more support or opposition. You have to kind of get rid of those, much like the raid markers and. Um, I, I don't. I just really liked a lot of those, and that felt the shipments felt really interesting. I could throw them away to get a limited op, which was cool. I could keep them for extra resources, which was cool. It, it just very interesting. And the cartel's bases could move around, which was really interesting. Yeah, you could and, literally like pick up my operation and move throw to the it next across area. the <laughs> yeah, which you know makes sense. They they're able to go over there and just dig another hole and start. Yeah, just building, make a plantation over here. And and just interesting, interesting mechanics. I think uh, for some of those minor factions, even even the major factions, I, I felt like in this particular game, I swear I end up playing a lot of the government type players. Actually, usually you are the insurgent. You're more the insurgents. I don't know. I, I played the government in Cuba Libre. And you did. Yeah, I, I was like the insurgents in more I was in like Cuba Libre. Paralyzed. Because it's yeah. so small, and I felt like, oh, if, I, if I move here, here, yeah. this one, I felt like the board's a bit bigger. I've got yeah. a few more resources. I was able to put guys out, and I was able to just, I was make some big moves here and there. I felt like I had a bit more freedom than yeah. I have felt in other games as well, which was nice True. to be able to kind of swing into the jungles, cut down some mm-hmm. uh, cartel bases, you know, flush out some gorillas from the mountains and do some assaults, things like that. Well, the other cool thing about the government is, you know, the government in any of these games, Colonial Twilight, Fire in the Lake, this one, you know, they have unlimited resources. I mean, at one time, how many resources did you get up to? I had like 60 70, or 70. Yeah. And you were literally able <laughs> to attack in like five different spots when you got the opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. 
And it's, that's exactly the way the government is. They, they have the airlift capability. So you literally could airlift, move out, and yeah, then just picking up some guys and wipe me out. And drop them over here. I also liked the FARC. The FARC's ability was pretty cool. It, we, I think it took a while to get that going. But once they kind of spread out into the country and they started replicating with their rally, and you could see by the board, it, it was hard to stop them. Yeah, they got kind of out of control there. And they were ready to put three more bases down, which is like, that's really bad. It's very bad for the AUC. Yeah. Because their victory condition is... It Have more bases. It's a, a base competition with the FARC. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's just a lot to like in this. I've We are very seasoned coin players. With that being said, I yeah, did not yeah. find this. This was not difficult to learn. No, this was... I. We both talked about this. We feel like this is one of the more simple to enter... Coin games. Which is nice, right? It's yeah. the first one in the series. I'm surprised yep. by that. But I'll be honest, we hardly read the rules. I don't... Well, know. we've played dozens and dozens of times. And we just skimmed the, play, the play rates. The plays are very good. Yep. We know how to read and interpret those. Because the the English is very specific. And... and it's very yes. specific. And if it says and, it means and. If it says yeah. or, it means or. And you really have to focus on that. Volko is very explicit in how he writes rules. Yeah. And having played a couple of his games... He's, it's like you read it literally and do precisely what, what it, it says. says. And no, no more, interpretation. no less. Yep. Yep. And it's like, what? This breaks a rule. What does this mean? You're like, no, no. That's you what do it is. exactly what it says. That's how it's intended yeah. to be. And so with that, it was really easy to learn. I know the style of his writing. So I'm like, great, we'll put it out. Picked we it set up. it up and did it. Well, Start playing basically right away. Yeah. And that's, if you played coin games you'd be able to do the same thing with this one. Agreed. Because there isn't a whole lot of extra crunch here and there, not all these extra bits and pieces or changes. This yeah. is this is the original coin game, right? Just pick it up and play it if you've not done yep. this one. Yep. I, this comes with my recommendations. I, I liked this, and I, I really want to play it again. Because yes. now, now I feel like I get it and more. And, it, you know, and, and it's also... The, the other thing we talk a lot about, these, these card-assisted or card-driven games. This is not card-driven, it's card-assisted. I love learning the history, like reading yeah. those events and understand. Oh, I remember that from the news in the '80s or '90s, you know. And what's interesting about these cards is, it, like, some cards in some games, it's like here's the picture, here's the event, here's what it does, and then it has a little, like, yeah. a couple sense of explanation. This, these games don't do that. No. What it does is, you got a picture of the event, yeah, and them. and the and the game effects. Teaches you the history what, of what yep. it was. If what, you want more what, details, what you're going to have to look it up. And I don't, do they have it in the back of the they playbook? They do. They, each card is explained Which in the back of nice. the playbook. Like that gives you the historic details, mm-hmm. but you can figure out what this thing did based on its effects. Yeah. Which I think is neat. I like doing that with these games. I learn the history yeah. as we go based on, oh, this card says this thing. I don't know what that is, but yeah. oh, this is what happened on the board. Okay, that's yep. just what this means. That That's a cool way to do that too. Well, the other thing I really enjoy about these coin games in general is all of the factions, I believe, are well thought out well put together and they are historical yes and what i mean by that is you know the cartel they build these bases out in the countryside they're easier for the government to to kind of wipe out yeah i can go and drop an airstrike you don't have to worry about this happening you know in in the cities it's a little harder can't drop an airstrike in the city yeah you can't you can't (laughs) um I, i don't know i just like that because the the factions have those baked in historical elements that really make them stand out. And I I love that. Because once again, we play these games to learn something. Yeah. To have fun, but also to learn. And at the same time, it's like a dudes on the map style area yeah. control game. That's it, in its tiniest kind of most boiled down form. That's really what these coin games are. Agree. And moving dudes around on a big board is fun and it's cool. And yep. it's challenging it tactically as well. And the game looks beautiful. Yes. I mean, all these games, I remember when I first saw my first coin on on Twitter, I, I mean, I was like, uh, that yeah. game looks awesome. Yeah. I don't even know what it's about, but it looks awesome. What I'll do is I'll show you the board and just a little bit about it. Uh, we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts here. So here's a look at the board, or at least as much of it as I can fit in here. Let's see if I can't move this up. Sorry, we oh, won't knock everything off. But down here, you've just got a couple extra regions, and then there's tracks for the AUC player, the FARC bases, and then down here, some cartel bases as well. But basically, you've got map of Colombia, and it's divided up into 
these regions, which are called departments, or these circles, which are the cities in blue. Um, outside that, you've got Panama up here, Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, and Venezuela. So you have those kind of surrounding areas. Those are mostly out of play. Ecuador and Panama, there's some events that you can kind of put some bases and bits and pieces in there. Um, but mostly those are off limits. And then you'll see, at least in this kind of portion of the map, the regions are divided, the departments are divided by these roads, or these are oil pipelines. And those are generically, all of them are referred to as lines of communication. Um, so there'll be uh, times where some of the guerrilla units are going to be moving onto the pipeline, they'll be destroying the pipeline, sabotaging it, and these have values on them, on the pipelines and on the roads. If you sabotage those, it hurts the government's resources, so that the government player will have less money over the course of the game if you keep doing that. The government player, which is the both the dark blue and the light blue faction, you've got dark blue troops, light blue police, they, they're looking to clear off all these lines of communication with the police forces, and then the troops are going out trying to quite literally um, smoke out the guerrillas and to eradicate the guerrilla bases, which are these discs, and there's Gorilla. kind of different ones all over. Um, on top of that, you get the extra added layer, which is one of my favorite parts of these games, of the kind of the control and the support in each of these regions and cities. So control is simply dictated by who has the most pieces in an area. Um, so here in, in this, I'm not going to butcher the names, all the red, all the FARC pieces here means FARC have control. In this one, government has control, all these blue pieces. That's pretty simple, but the control um, will determine where you can rally and get new guys and certain operations that you can do. On the other side of this is you have this opposition here, and if you flip it over, oh, that's, so this is passive opposition, which has a times one multiplier, or a active opposition, a times two multiplier. This multiplies by the this two and a square, so it's two times two is four, that's basically four active opposition points. And that's tracked with this little marker for the FARC player who's trying to get their, their Marxist group. They're looking for opposition to the government. So opposition plus bases. So the number of bases from this little track, let's say they have nine bases out on the board, plus all of these different opposition values. That gives them a score on this victory track around the edge of the board. And that's how that player wins the game. The government is trying to look for active, or they're trying to look for support, which is a little, the, uh, basically the equivalent of this, but it's blue. So if they pay enough money, they can change this to support it effectively if, if there's other stipulations. Um, and that's how the government player is going to win with total support. All they're looking for is to get support in as many regions as possible and as much of it as possible. So they're sending their troops out, trying to kill guerrillas and, and uh, insurgents, and then invest in infrastructure and repairing all the damage and goodwill. Uh, they pay resources to gain active support, basically. That's what they're trying to do. The you see these little yellow guys down here, they're kind of a hardline right-wing group. Quite simply, they are trying to have a presence on the board. They have a total of six possible bases they can put out, and their goal is to have more bases out than the FARC player. So you think of it as kind of like a fascist against a Marxist, communist type of a little conflict there. So the AUC might work in conjunction with the government to eradicate the Marxist F, the FARC player, kill their bases, and the AUC is trying to put out a bunch of bases. That's how they're going to win the game. And then lastly, you've got the cartel, which is the green. All they care about is money, basically, and they do that by putting out bases. They want lots and lots of bases out is they use those bases from which to um, basically produce drugs and put guerrillas out to protect those. And they're trying to cash in all of this stuff for as many resources and as much money as possible. If they have a certain amount of money and bases on the board, they will win the game. And so they're, they're, they're a kind of an opportunistic faction. You'll look into put guys out, put bases out in places where there might have been conflict and 
the government and FARC have killed each other, you go in, pop in a few bases, make a bit of money here and there, extort some people, bribe some people, things like that. Uh, so they are a really fascinating faction to play. But that's that's what that's what's good about these coin games, right? You're looking to do a lot of different things with different factions. Each time you play this, play a different faction, it'll be a totally different gaming experience. But the map is very clear, it's very uh, bold. This is kind of the original map. This looks a lot like Cuba Libre. Uh, Fire in the Lake has a similar type of, uses the same terrain as well. But you're moving guys from area to area, trying to attack each other through conflict. And you do that through your special menu. These are all the cartel's actions and special actions. And then FARC have their own actions. The government has their own actions here. And the AUC has their own actions. So really what you're doing is, if I'm the government player, I'm really focusing on this, trying to pick out what's best for me to do. But I also can see, oh, this is what the enemy's trying to do. So and when it's not my turn, I'm looking at these other things as well, trying to follow along what they're trying to do and how they're going to exploit my position. And that's where some people get overwhelmed with these games, but this is one of the huge, the best parts of these games, I think, is that each faction is very different, um, and how you play those, it, it's, it's great. So, if you need to learn more about coin games, there's a ton of other good videos about the rules and how to actually move everything, but just wanted to show you the board and show you kind of some of the factions here. And what we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Um, just did the pieces on it a little bit mechanics wise, but all, all in all, we had a great time with this. Agreed. I think I we play a we played every single coin game. Yep, that is the, we have that is a factual statement that I can make. We we have played every one of them, and we own all eight of them. And ahead of their three more coming out in the next right. year. Um, th again, this is the first ever coin game. If you haven't played it, I I, I do recommend this. I would definitely say one and two are very good and will intro you to the system and get you up and playing and, and allow you to then play the rest of them. I, very well done. Very well done. And honestly, I would be more than happy to introduce newer players to this one. Yep. Um, especially if I had a couple of seasoned people and mm -hmm. a couple of new people. This isn't a complex one compared to the other ones. At Matt, least. Matt and Tim could get this. One, they've played Falling Sky. They played Cuba Libre. They would get they this. They played Liberty of Death as well. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. And those are those ones are a, a little more a, complex. A, yeah, have at least a decent step up. Sometimes yeah. big step up. F Falling Sky, I think, had a lot of complex machinations. It was, just a lot of, it was a lot of different stuff. Right. Right. Combat um, was very different. Yeah. This. Um, mm -hmm. is very plain. The rule book is actually not that big. But not plain in a bad way. No, I don't no, want no, anyone no. to think that. This is... It's pure. It's it's the system without a lot of extra bells and whistles. Yes. Which is very fun to play. It's great. It's a great game. Yeah. And, okay, I think we wanted to talk about this earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I was, again, with Seasoned. This went along at a really good clip. Oh, yeah. We were playing this and played through it, and it went along pretty quickly. Yeah. Some of the other games, it's like, what are these extra rules? Oh, I've got so much to think about. Well, and it's usually, frankly for me, it's looking at the, you know, the menu of your ops and special activities and trying to understand how the heck do these work together. I felt like these were clear how they work together. Yeah, there's not much a clearer. ton of extra stipulations no. on each one of these ops. Yep. It was just like, I'm going to move, I'm going to attack. Do you I'm have an underground gorilla? Thing. If yes, you can flip him over and you can extort. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I, I think these, sometimes with Fire in the Lake, and we talk a lot about this, those are so complex that we kind of sit there and we're like, what am I trying to do? And how those going to work together? And how many turns is it going to take? Yeah. Which makes that game fantastic. Just this was much simpler. This also has a short Quick, like a quick game version, like where you literally two use cards. half the cards. Yep. Um, so if you wanted to, there's rules for that. Um, you I think that one can be played in about two hours, give or take. For new players, would be my guess. I think, for, yeah, maybe maybe, maybe three more for new players. For new players, I think for season players, you yeah, go through very quick. And then the, hour. the full deck, you play this for three or four hours. Three, probably four. Depends, probably and it four. depends on your player count as well. Yeah, I think. right. 
but th- that's that's nice that there's an option for that. Yeah, a shorter game might not necessarily be as balanced because you mm. just randomly use half the cards, so you might get screwed. <laughs> like... Well, we always enjoy. I, I think we've always enjoyed the games more as the starting from scratch. That's how they were meant to be. That's how they're meant to be. Yeah. We we don't like. Oh, how did I get a base down there? Because we know how hard it is to get bases sometimes in right. certain. So I I like better starting from scratch. But the way the game is designed, it's an option. It's there. Yeah, this has the brand new full solitaire AI bots for all the different factions. Yeah, which we've not, we have not played. And I suppose I have to say, I don't. They're not solitaire AI bots. They are non-player. Yeah. So you could have factions, maybe two players playing, and then you could use the bots for yes. To, so that's the way. So you, you would could have do that as well. You would have somebody playing the FARC, somebody the government, and then the two solo bots would be running the other two. Yeah, you, you'd be so. That, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can play this. Yeah. Or you, yeah, you can just play both sides. You can do solo. Good. Yeah, or you can do solo and play all four sides. Exactly. I've done that before too. Just do best possible action. So there's a yeah, uh, lots of ways to play this. Mm-hmm. This is a good four player game. This is a good two-player game. Well, I would say, I think my general opinion of all the coin games is they are, for their full player count, they are the best. Yeah. The three-player or the four-player or the two-player, obviously with Colonial Twilight, yeah. y- you need to play them the way they were designed because that brings out the fun, the it's negotiation. The, it the, the best. It's the best yeah. to play them in. Yeah. You just have more fun jabbing people or... telling them, I'm not going to attack you and then yeah, lying like, to them. Like and we're supposed something. to be allies working together. Yeah, right. Like, Oh, you've taken all my pieces. I don't want you to do that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. If you can get max plays for this, go for it. Uh, But it works well as as two player accounts. Two player and, yep. Um, So, I appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been Andy and Abyss, which we have finally taken a look at. Yeah. As the first ever coin game, but our last one we've played. (laughs) Yeah, right. We did it completely backwards. So yeah, Andy and Abyss from GMT Games, designed by Walco Runke, mm-hmm. available now. This is the second edition, uh, so they've redone some of the cards, all those yeah. new play, the, the solo the new bots. bots and things yep. like that as well. So appreciate you guys tuning in, and I've been Alexander from theplayers8.com. And I'm Grant. <laughs>